Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be working on a pair of uh, my buddy's area boots. Going to be uh, doing a little bit of a surprise for him and giving some major upgrades to these boots for him. So come join us and check out what we're going to take care of on them. All right, so first things first, I gotta take out these uh, shoe trees. Yes, I had some shoe trees in here for him. He took them off his feet and they were obviously a little bit sweaty and all that, um, but they were in fairly rough shape. So I really wanted to make sure that all the moisture got wicked away nicely from them. And uh, yeah, so anyone that does work like he does, he's an electrician, uh, works for kind of every now and then as a freelancer and stuff like that and does a number of things with electrical. Um, I've known this guy since I think like freshman year of high school, so fairly long time that I've known him. He's a good friend of mine for many years. But uh, yeah, he, he's definitely uh, put some miles on these boots and it's time to get them taken care of. So we're gonna make sure to take care of that little cover there. But we're going to take him out and get going on him. Uh, he's got some insoles. Huh. Okay. Ah, that's, I think, an original. Nope, that's an aftermarket sole. I think. I don't know. He's getting new ones anyways. So, construction-wise, let's take a quick look on the inside what we got going on. So he is requesting to have a, uh, a wedge sole put on him, something with a lower heel preferably he wants, just because it feels more comfortable for him that way. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, for those of you who have talked to me maybe or asked me questions about Ariat's, all, all, honest, all honesty, I'm not a big fan of Ariat as a cobbler. From a cobbler's perspective, definitely not a great boot. Now, for consumer, like anyone that owns them, they are a phenomenal boot. Now, these boots are designed for comfort right out of the box majority of the time. They have a lot of great features. They have a huge selection of different sizes, styles, widths, and just all sorts of things. They hit all the categories for with construction work, with uh, a number of other things. But when it comes to recraftability, the cost is just not there. It's not worth to have them recrafted and redone completely. Um, they're just they're just one of those brands that they make a great boot, but they're really kind of a one-time use type of thing. I mean, we could maybe replace the heels on them every now and then and that kind of stuff, do some shines and conditions, minor stitch work. But when it comes to the full recraft, cost-wise on a lot of them is not worth it. It's just, it just isn't so. You know, that's just the way it is, basically. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of turpentine here. Start deactivating that adhesive. And grab my trusty little rip knife here. Um, try to see where everything is on there. Oh, man. It's one of those. Oh, no. Now I've been debating over and over whether I'm gonna do it this way or not. I was debating because the welt on these is so shot that it was like, you know, if this was anyone but my buddy, I would just say it is not worth replacing the entire sole unless we just replace literally the sole but not including the midsole which we usually also replace the cork and everything at that point but for my buddy we're going to give him a bit of an upgrade in other words uh, for these so now if i can get this thing to cooperate there we go area tends to use a plastic welt on over 90 percent of their stuff which is 
not a good thing for those of you who are wondering yes it's not a good thing because you can see maybe right here there's some cracking going on there's some odd wear right here on the toe just right there so if i was to replace the midsole and everything like we would want to do that welt will not withstand being stitched again so the welt has to be replaced and again cost wise is just not practical so for my buddy here we are going to be replacing the welt on it and i've got some here that's some good old storm welt there it'll be leather so recrafting on them in the future will significantly be a lot easier for us cobblers it will be a better thing and just overall better construction the difference with leather and the plastic is that the leather when you're walking obviously your boot bends and so if you have a leather welt it needs to bend it needs to stretch it needs to have some form of give but plastic doesn't do any of that it'll bend to a degree but day in day out bending and bending over and over and twisting and turning it's not going to hold up it's going to be in very rough shape very very quickly I need to go get my other last back. Gentleman that uses usually is not in, so let me go grab that. Ah, I got it back. All right, I like this uh, jack stand last, whatever you want to call it. And sure enough, there's my knife. All right, because it can lock and doesn't twist on me, so it works out great. The other thing is that this thing's definitely got a little more weight to it. It's uh, solid cast iron. And I usually leave it over at that other workbench because the guy that uh, works at that workbench there, he uh, he does a higher amount of turnaround time. I'm a slow, slow person that works on stuff. I take my time and he does great work at a faster pace. He just does a number of the smaller jobs a little bit more than I do. Well, I get stuck with uh, the jobs that nobody else wants to touch at the shop sometimes. Now, obviously this, what I'm doing here, cutting like that is not recommended from a cobbler's perspective because you'll accidentally cut through the welt, but that don't matter. We're replacing the welt anyways. But it looks like I haven't really damaged it anyways, anywhere. And my buddy, he's, uh, he's used to things like a molded sole. That's typically what he is used to. Sorry about that interruption. But my buddy here, he's used to wearing molded style soles or molded style builds and so Goodyear welted at least real Goodyear welted not this plastic junk here you would have majority of the time cork filler in there these ones have foam which is garbage um, but considering the way my buddy walks and his you know particular wear patterns and all that kind of stuff um, replacing that filler with cork would be ideal but for him it would actually be better to do the soft cushion stuff but one thing is that we don't really carry that soft cushiony stuff and the other great thing is actually he's having orthotics added in there afterwards at the very end once we're done resoling them so he's going to be well off and we'll leave the cork in there give him a little extra layer of insulation longer durability on the inside because cork will wick away moisture a lot better than the foam does. The foam just kind of absorbs it and just holds it for an extended period of time where the cork will actually try to wick it away and make it dissipate, which is definitely nice. Okay. 
double check the steel shank. Shank is good. If it was broken, it would be a nightmare taking these apart to try to get that out because the shank is actually embedded underneath here. It'd just be horrible, horrible to do. But let's see. Here's the split right here where the welt is. So if you end up finding on the inside of the boot, I don't know if that will show too easily on this one because of how dirty it is. But sometimes there's a little bit of a split right here. That's where the welt connects. Do not freak out. That's not a factory flaw. It's not a defect. There's nothing wrong with it. That's normal. That's like very, very normal on even a number of high-end boots and shoes. Although the higher-end brands, they will typically try to get the connection point so perfect that you can't even tell. But... Just if you ever see that, don't freak out. That's normal. It's on every pair of boots and shoes that have that Goodyear welt design. Whether it's uh, real leather, whether it's synthetic material or plastic like these ones here. Now, again the challenge with this being plastic and not one to bend. And me trying to show everyone how this is done. Uh, come on. I'm doing the exotic cobbler move. For any of you that are wondering what that looks like, let me readjust. That's what it looks like right there. If you can see, my leg wraps around it. Uh, the, the jack stand. And I call it the exotic cobbler move because we, uh, we have to wrap our leg around us sometimes to prevent this thing from wobbling too much or shifting on us. And so, should I trademark that exotic cobbler move? I don't know, it'd be kind of funny. But I've seen only a handful of cobblers do that actually. I, I think I'm one of the very few that full blown wraps his leg around like that. feels right you know feels right to me it does <laughs> all right so you get the idea of what I'm doing just going through with the razor and just uh, cutting through the stitches of where the Goodyear welt is at this point it's just gonna be a matter of taking some time and cutting through it all so let me go ahead and uh, do the rest of this one take apart the other boot do the same thing and get ready to clean everything out on there um, now obviously he's got kind of a hole cracked through there so we're gonna make sure to take care of that as well for him and uh, we don't want any kind of issues going on there so I'll fix it up all right so I'll be back here in just a just a little bit for you all right everyone so I've got my solution mixed up in here now we're quite literally just gonna go ahead and dunk them on in here unfortunately I can only really fit one boot in at a time but I'm just gonna massage a little bit in here and just let it sit and soak there afterwards I'm gonna should have grabbed a towel but I'll have to use my little spot towel here get all that cream and polish afterwards I'm gonna grab my nylon brush once I take it out here in a few minutes brush it up nicely flip them over in the sink upside down so everything kind of drains out of there nicely and then I'm gonna stick the boot trees in and let them sit overnight. For any of you wondering, I do have Jason's, uh, Jason Dornstar's videos playing in the background today. I've skipped over a bunch of his videos recently and haven't had a chance to watch them and my phone hasn't been notifying me either. So sorry Jason, I missed a lot of your live streams. But anyways, if you haven't checked out Jason, he's got a lot of cool ASMR stuff that will put you to sleep. It's like a lullaby. Check them out uh, on YouTube, just Jason Dorn Star. D-O-R-N-S-T-A-R. So check them out. But anyways, let these soak a little bit and then uh, we'll continue on. I am wondering, I may have to do some minor repairs in certain areas around here uh, where the gimming, it looks like it's uh, 
lopsided in other words but my buddy is also at the same time saying that he's having water getting in there obviously it's probably because the welt is already damaged so i'm actually going to do something else because the way this boot is constructed that gimming is stitched to the upper right here around the edges and then it's also stitched to the base in here so replacing that is just going to be horrible 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 um, as much as I'd like to do that, I may have to pass on it, but I have an alternative that may actually help reinforce the waterproofing aspects of this. But before then, regardless, I still have to clean it and see how it comes along, and then I'll let you check that out. Unfortunately, it's going to add a little bit more time to being able to do, um, do these boots because the idea that I have is a special epoxy and it takes time for it to dry. So anyways, let that silk there for a little bit while I pack away and uh, get the rest of it taken care of and let them sit overnight and I'll be back here tomorrow to continue on. So I'll see you back here a little bit later. All right, everyone, so we're back here with these. Now uh, we've got them all dried up. I had to take the uh, shoe trees out this morning and flip them upside down on one of our uh, dryers we have for these boot and shoe dryers where they just go in here and blow warm air in there and that helped a lot because this is a nylon and padding on the inside so it really needed to thoroughly dry um, and so overnight it just sat there upside down with those shoe trees in there and really dried out a good amount and let everything leak out of there since they were upside down but this morning it still wasn't enough so stuck them on the uh, blow dryers for I think a total of about 20 minutes and did a great job there's a few small spots that are just a tiny tiny bit damp but the solution has uh, vinegar in there so if any of you are concerned about that um, you know whether it was gonna mold or anything like that no it's not going to it's not gonna mold because there is obviously vinegar in there now at this stage I'm gonna go ahead and put the shoe trees back in there and because how dry these have been and everything and you know they need a lot of love and attention i'm going to use some big four which i am out of in this bottle so i'm going to have to go up front and grab a new one and uh, just condition it and let it sit there for a little while soaking in that condition i'm going to put a nice hefty coat on there to really restore it on that so go ahead and get that taken care of and uh, we'll go from there all right so back here again with these i've got them all conditioned up with that big four now i know some of you are saying well aren't you a big fan of Saphir? yes i am but uh we're still going through with these all around. At the end, we're gonna obviously be using some Saphir. But uh, for now, they're still a work in progress and I needed some form of conditioner to get these kind of back a little bit. I mean, they still need a lot of love and attention on those uppers because they are beaten up badly. But for the time being, we're gonna go ahead and use this piece of leather here I cut out of a sheet. I've got another one over there for the other boot that's drying. And I just glued up one side here and the inside here. Um, now, like I said, the the uh, gimming around here where it's stitched, it had a little bit of damage, so I checked through it, fixed it up a little bit, but there's also some cracking here, and replacing that uh, midsole area here is just not going to be a great option, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I was thinking about using a special filler, but using a leather piece to reinforce it will help significantly with... Uh, re sealing everything and reinforcing it all especially once we stitch on that welt we're going to stitch right through this leather so it's going to pretty much turn into true hand welting in other words okay i'm just using my heel pry to Get it to lay down nicely inside where the welt is. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Sit the, let this sit there for a little bit and dry and then I'm just going to grab some scissors and cut off all that extra that's hanging around all over the place like that so now it's completely sealed so those cracks there are going to be a lot better now we can put a leather patch inside um, but it may get in the way of uh, being able to accommodate an insole in here and so I'd rather much not I'd rather much 
can't talk right now this evening, but I'd much rather not have uh, any additional material in there that can take up space. Um, again, ideally it would be best to remove that midsole and change it out, but the gemming is stitched to the midsole as well as the upper separately, and it's just this huge mess. In other words, if I start taking it apart, uh, which can cause more problems, and we don't want that. But at least we've got that taken care of now at this point. We'll just let it sit and dry for a few minutes while I'm doing that and a few, uh, doing the other boot and a few other things, and then we'll start getting ready to stitch on that welt there. So we'll see you back in just a few. All right, so we got it trimmed up a little bit, and at this point, um, taking my stitch all like that right there. I don't know if that's catching or not. It's just basically a hook needle, in other words and stitching on the new welt and it's obviously as you can tell kind of a tedious job so because we have this leather piece in here i am stitching through it if you've seen some of my previous videos uh, typically when we're changing out the welt on there um, we're stitching back to the all the original materials and it goes through this leather upper here you can see some of the holes let me grab the other boot instead you can see some of the original holes right here and that's what we're aiming for is those original holes and usually it would go through the liner uh, which it is on this one and then also the gemming and whatever else may be in between there too and uh, and then we stitch it but since we have this leather piece here we're also going through that as well and that's going to add a little bit of durability with that leather piece as well as uh, restore the waterproof features to it um, which my buddy said uh, his feet were getting wet, so I'm going to give him a little bit of an additional upgrade with, with all that. So it's quite a tedious thing of just stitching all around and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this off camera, stitch it together. And uh, side note for anyone ever wondering, we always start on the inside. So this is the shoe upside down right now, and we always start on the inside here. That way, when we come back around, the connection point is on the inside of the shoe, so you don't really see that gap. We try to get it as close as we can, add a little bit of adhesive to, but obviously there's going to be a slight gap in there. And if you ever notice that on your shoes or boots, that's normal. Don't freak out. Don't think, oh, there's a flaw in it or anything like that. That's a very, very normal thing. Um, with this method that I'm doing here, this is basically converting this pair of boots from a Goodyear welt build technically into a hand welted boot now because we're stitching it by hand and controlling the uh the tightness of each individual stitch and aiming for all the original holes and everything and that we also have this leather piece added in here definitely helps build up that uh, durability side to all of it so let me uh, go ahead and keep stitching all around and when it's uh, time to continue on with the next steps, uh, let's see, it's always hard to aim for those holes sometimes. Once we continue on to the next steps, you'll get to see what we're doing next on there. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit then. All right, everyone, so we're back here again. We've got these all stitched up with the new welt all around. I filled this bottom in with some cork. I've got the first one on put a midsole on here and this is a different type of midsole actually this one is significantly thicker than traditional midsoles um before i put this one in the oven i thought i'd let you see it's nearly double i've got this brown one right here that's your traditional one and this black one right here is nearly double it's i think about uh 75 thicker and uh the reason why i'm putting this one on here is because uh, my buddy wants uh wants a little bit more low profile in other words he wants actually almost no heel if he could on there but we still have to add a little bit of a wedge and so in order to be able to accommodate all, all those features we're going to put on a much thicker midsole on there that's stitchable and that way it still helps reduce some of that strain that goes to the toe area so at this point uh this one all i need to do all the other ones in the oven and this one's still a little warm i'm gonna grab my razor here it's just a hook razor like that and just gonna cut off some of the extra. Definitely doesn't cut as easily as your traditional midsole would just because 
again, it's a lot thicker, <laughs> so I have to, and this is a fairly new blade in here too, I think I've only used it twice on very thin material. If you're ever wanting the thicker midsole, just uh, let us know, because typically if we're putting on a midsole, it's it's the standard stuff. Um, if you are wanting a particular color, however, these thicker ones only come in black at the moment. Uh, if they ever come in additional colors, obviously we'll let everybody know. But for, the, for now, we've got this one on there, the other one's in the oven, and I'm gonna hang these up to dry and cure overnight. Uh, that way, I feel a little more comfortable with the stitching aspect. Some cobblers like to stitch them immediately. Sometimes we kind of have to as well. But in the meantime, I can at least, um, you know, let it cure, and when I stitch it, our needles aren't going to get caught up on any glue or adhesives that might be, you know, kind of getting in the way. Uh, one other thing I am going to do, if I can find it, uh, I'm trying to remember where I may have put it. I am wanting to seal these up just a little bit more, wherever that may be. Shoot, somebody gone stole it. Or in my case, I always lose it. Well, I need to find it. I've got some of this here. This is a, what's called quick sole. It's a sealant, basically, that's got a solution. This one's a beige color. I have a black one somewhere around here that I need to locate. But I'm going to go ahead and carefully go around the edges and fill in right here. Even though we've got this uh, kind of Norwegian-style welt, my buddy was fairly rough on these. And I definitely want to, as an extra measure... Of, of protection i'm going to seal up all around there to kind of let that uh, you know seal up the goodyear welting aspect of it so additional waterproofing definitely great with this stuff another one you can use is kg boot guard i don't have a box up here but it comes in a jar like this very similar stuff but we're going to use this quick sole it's made by uh, renya i believe i believe so Yep, right now. So, kind of hard to get this stuff uh, for a number of cobblers out there and uh, for the general public also fairly not too common. But anyways, I'm gonna let this one sit for a little while and cool off while I get the black one and then I'm just gonna go around the edge and just kind of work it into the uh, little crevices there and uh, get the other one ready before it starts melting on me or something because it's been in that oven for a little bit too long. So I'll see you back here in a little bit, and uh, we'll... Alright everyone, so we're back here with these. Um, I did trim up the welt and the midsole a little bit here so that it's a little bit more, I guess you can say, narrow because this was a wider welt that we put on here. And uh, now at this point we're going to go ahead and stick the soles on. Make sure everything's fitting right. There we go. Now I didn't actually put that sealant on there yet. I'm probably gonna do that here in a little bit. I didn't seem to locate it at the time. But regardless, I thought it'd be a better idea anyways to put it on after we get at least this Christie sole on because it's a thicker sole and may end up pulling and twisting it just a little bit differently. And so maybe it'll open up some additional gaps that may need to be filled in. But at this point, I'm gonna stick it on the press, let it cure for a little bit, and then start getting ready to sand everything down to remove some of that so that it can accommodate the uh, Vibram Sierra sole. So let me go and stick that on the press and get the other one going, and we'll see you back here in just a little
so we're back here again with these. I did end up uh, going ahead and sanding everything out just because it was one of those things where if I was to record it, I'd have to be going back and forth because I have to measure it and all sorts of things just because this one we did have to modify a little bit because my buddy wanted to have a lower heel. And so we had to be able to accommodate that and that involves just back and forth measurement and sanding and it would have been one of those things that takes forever. But at this point, uh, I've got the uh, Vibram Sierra sole out of the oven, so it's nice and warm. And we're just gonna stick it all together. We're gonna let it uh, sit and cure overnight, but before I head home tonight, I'm gonna finally do that KG boot guard on the inside here where the welt is. Got it. But that way we can allow that KG boot guard to really settle in nicely before we finally start sanding and then treating the uppers. We did that uh, big four treatment on it just a little bit, but we need something a little bit stronger than that. And so has to take multiple steps, at least on these ones, because he, he really, really put some miles on these boots here. And considering that the sole from area is actually fairly durable, he really wore those things out. So Getting a little bit of an upgrade with the Vibram. It's gonna be easier to resole and take care of down the road, but I gotta get after my buddy for maintaining his boots if he plans to have them for quite some time after that. So let me stick these on the press and uh, let them sit for a little while and then we'll go ahead and do the KG boot guard then. All right, everyone. So I've got the uh, soles uh, set and cured a little bit and I trimmed up the edges just takes off some of that access a little bit but before anything else I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little uh, edging tool here like this and kind of just take off some of this little sharp edge from the new weld um, just because during the sanding it kind of becomes a little bit on the sharper side and just doesn't look all that great if this thing cooperates with me there we go Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it's just a tough spot to get into. But it just takes off a nice little piece like that off the edge, like right here. Maybe if the camera can catch it, it's a little bit nicer and smoother. Or right here, it's a little, little jaggedy and sharp and everything. Obviously, we're still going to be sanding it out some more, so we may have to possibly go through it some more. But there was so much just sticking out that I thought I'd go through it right now and kind of get some of it out of the way. Uh, the next stage of sanding would be the, well, the 24 grit belt for the majority of this uh, harder sole, the Sierra. And then afterwards we'll move on to the 100 grit sanding belt, which will uh, take off just a little bit of the edge here and just smoothen things out. It's these little details sometimes it makes makes a difference so and the majority of the time I can actually take this off on the sander but it doesn't doesn't always catch at the right angle and stuff so go through it just a little bit there. Voila. Okay, so we got some of it off and uh, we'll be going through it again because it may reappear just after that sanding. But at this point, I'm going to open up my KG boot guard here and it's pretty much, I guess you can say, it's the same equivalent as the stuff that you would find in uh, bed liners of pickup trucks. And so it's infused with Kevlar and it's really tacky and everything. and it actually takes a while to cure uh, depending on the amount of layers and what the application is like it can take up to 48 hours for this stuff to cure but since we're putting a small thin coat overnight it should uh, should do a fairly good amount there and I'm just applying it with this brush here I'm just trying to get down in there right where the welt meets the upper just like that and it gets it gets messy it gets really really messy and there's not much that can be done if we're doing this kind of process here but it's an extra precaution that uh, they'll definitely help so after I apply a bit of a coat around here 
I'm gonna grab a rag and then wipe it off. And then that rag ends up in the trash anyways. So used rags work out great. A lot of times what a lot of uh, people who are in the construction industry, um, electricians, if you're working with uh, cement as well, the same stuff is actually put on the toe. Some people call it tough toe. Technically tough toe is a brand. Um, I don't like that stuff too much personally, just because tough toe in particular, it actually dries uh, hard and so if you kick something it has a tendency to crack and just doesn't work out all that well so I prefer to use this stuff I'm actually gonna do a daily post on this I don't know if that daily post will be up beforehand I'm gonna be comparing the tough toe versus the uh, uh, KG boot guard and also against um, a few other ones as well which are very similar and some of you might be saying well there's a few made by certain companies and stuff uh red wing for example i believe they so-called make one actually they don't make their own they brand it with their own label so for anybody wondering it's it's just branded that way it's still the same exact product um that's one of the reasons why they actually at uh, Red Wing don't sell this KG boot card anymore because KG boot card. Sorry for that interruption, but uh, yeah, a KG boot card didn't end up wanting to do that where Red Wing ended up putting their label on it. And, and some of the managers and sales reps of the Red Wing stores will tell you that as well. They'll be like, no, we don't carry KG boot card because they didn't want to put our name on their product and that's that's respectable um kg boot guard you can probably find at most of your uh, local cobbler well actually not so much there's a new brand in town that's uh, been kind of taking over and the only reason why it's been taking over is due to cost it's cheaper in cost than kg boot guard i mean come on the stuff's not really that huge of a price difference it's just there are some cobbler shops that you know to them every penny counts and stuff and they're pretty much actually retailing it for very close to the same price as what this KG boot guard is. In reality it's you know it's similar. It's a similar product, but the KG boot card still it's it's my go-to. It's it's got an upper hand. I got to give it to them. And I mean, I, I like Tough Toe as well. It's It's got its own uses and application as well, but this stuff is flexible. It doesn't crack. That's the one great thing. So if you want to know more about uh, Tough Toe, KG Bukar, and all the new ones coming out as well, um, you know, just stay tuned for that video. That's why you got to make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you're notified. But... There we go. So now, I'm wipe off some of this excess amounts here. And of course, some of it gets on the upper too. And um, I'm actually going to be having to do a little bit of light sanding by hand on these, anyways. So once this stuff is all dry and cured tomorrow, I I can actually technically start doing the sanding but i still got a number of things i got to do on the sole area anyways but that gives you the idea it's not too visible or anything on the inside here maybe if the camera can catch it but right inside there around this welt area there is now kg boot card so and in order to give a nice waterproofing basically to these things kind of an extra step up I like throwing that on. I like using it on a number of other things too. Um, there's a version of hiking sole from Vibram that we like to use and uh, we use this in combination with that and hopefully I'll be able to try to get around to doing a video for those. It's a little annoying to do that particular video. The other thing is certain methods of applying that sole is almost like um, like a shop secret amongst number of cobblers like there are certain methods and techniques and so a number of cobblers are gonna get really mad if i do that video 
but it's not like any of you are going to be able to do it anyways you need proper equipment for some of this stuff it's just going to be impossible to do so stay tuned for that one when i finally get around to being able to do it but for the meantime this is my first area video finally so i had to do it okay and i'm doing some crazy stuff to these area i've been getting some weird crazy projects in one of which uh, i'll be doing a video on as well and uh, i might as well tell you because it'll probably come up after this video um I'm going to be working on a pair of, uh, what are they called? Uh, I just, just slipped out of my mind, but Doc Martens. I'm going to be converting, well, technically converting a pair of Doc Martens to Goodyear welt, actual Goodyear welt with leather, and uh, putting a JR leather sole on it. Yeah. <laughs> Doc Martens. Here, I'll show you. If you don't know what they are, that's a Doc Martin. That infamous yellow stitch right there and everything. These are getting leather soles from JR Leather. That's going to be one heck of an interesting project. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. Uh, if, it's if it's already up and you're watching this, uh, check it out in previous history or anything like that, and you'll be able to find it. It's going to be interesting. So anyways, let me go ahead and uh, finish out the other one so I can uh, start packing up and getting to go home. Let this cure overnight. I'm back in tomorrow to continue on with these. So we'll see you back. So as you saw, we sanded everything up and I'd gone ahead and done the black edge dressing and kind of waxed it up a little bit. There's not too much you know, wax needed just because the only part that really shows uh, lighter colored would be the uh, welt right there. But otherwise the midsole is composite. We've got the crepe material from that Vibram Christie and then the rubber from the Sierra sole. So trying to apply wax on that, there's no point because it's going to bend uh, the sole is going to be bending and flexing so that wax is just going to crack and crumble off and just look a little worse anyways but regardless i took uh took some of that uh edge dressing and applied it for the welt at least but at this point i'm going to go ahead and grab my little sandpaper pieces i've got 120 grit and a 220 grit here and i'm just going to go over a couple of areas here on the toe even though we did like a full cleaning on these I'm still going to try to Clean up maybe some of these rougher spots beforehand. At least the best I can, because after all, my buddy uses these for work boots and they're not gonna be perfect, but I can at least a little bit better. And it's just a matter of sitting there and sanding until you get to a de desirable you know, level, in other words. Now, obviously, as you can tell, maybe on this one here, there's something that he's spilt or dropped on there that looks like it's gonna be fairly permanent. It was a little worse before we did the full cleaning, but now it's starting to look a little better, but it won't be 100% perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically go through and sand, even like right here where I put the KG boot card and try to remove some of that a uh, little black discoloration in other words that if you want to call it that but I'm gonna remove as much as I can take care of it all and then afterwards if I can get in here I'm gonna grab some of my medium brown number 37 Sophia Medal Dior 
oil leather cream. Some of you know it as greasy cream. Some of you don't even know that Medal Dior has it in, in the oil, the creams, and they're just familiar with uh, the standard Beauty Cure version. But I like that stuff just because it seems to be a little bit nicer and uh, we definitely want to restore a lot of that nutrients in these. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of and be back here in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So we're back here again. I had uh, Sebastian Seabass actually help me out with these. I stopped by with his mom and uh, it was perfect timing so he helped uh, finish these out he had gone through with uh, some 120 and 220 sandpaper just kind of clean it up a little bit remove some of the dirt and everything that may be stuck to it and then afterwards he had gone and conditioned it with that uh, Saphir oil leather cream uh, I think he put on two coats on these ones because they were they were really dry and considering the fact that we also used the big four on there before we uh, really did too much else with it like adding the sole and everything so these uh, really got a number done on them obviously there are certain limitations like we can't really do too much about all that damage there but at least with that conditioner now um, that will prevent the leather from really just deteriorating any further and if he does end up nicking it somewhere else it's not going to start cracking and crumbling uh, with that conditioner so I'm de definitely gonna have to get after him for it and tell him look you got to start conditioning these things uh, probably at least once a week considering how he wears them uh, we also put in new insoles these were the ones that he requested they're one of my favorite personally if you aren't familiar with this brand it's called cadence insoles they're very cool insoles they got a thick gel cushion but a very nice three-quarter length hard orthotic underneath that's plastic so you get a really good arch support and a cupped heel uh, with a nice thick cushion over top of it obviously if you're not used to orthotics of any sort it's going to take some you know getting used to and transitioning to it but check them out uh, cadence we have them in stock here if you're not here in denver um, check out their website and see what they have uh, sebastian come here say hi real quick for those of you who don't know this is sea bass over here he was the one that was helping finish these guys out here so my buddy is gonna be very happy i'm gonna have to throw in a bottle of the conditioner in for him so that he can maintain them and uh, take good care of them but at that point got the new soles these are the old ones here we got the new vibram sierra soles above that is the vibram christie sole we got a thicker version of the midsole not your traditional 1 8 inch this one's a bit thicker and then we've got the new full 360 leather uh welt on here uh, norwegian welt technically is what it's called and then we also did the kg boot guard seal around the edges to help that also on the interior obviously you saw me put in that leather piece that will kind of help seal it up a little bit nicer also way too much also for these boots we have the cork in there instead of that junky foam stuff some new laces to top it all off and uh these are ready to go so hopefully he likes them i'm sure he will um he's used to certain types of builds so this is going to be a very different build for him uh it's going to take a little getting used to obviously because we've altered these boots significantly for him so we're going to go take some photos of him and he's going to be in a little bit later today to hang out with us here well not at the shop but a few doors down we're going to the cigar lounge and uh just uh relax for a little while and he gets to pick these up finally so i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below if you have any additional things that you need uh sent out to us for any repairs or if you have questions and you need to send photos go to our website cobblersplus.com all of our information is on there our address our uh ship and order forums and everything uh we're currently working on trying to build up a new one that's going to be a little easier and more functional so stay tuned for that but at the time of this recording it's still a work in progress so again thank you for watching don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this especially working on a pair of Ariots. i'm not a huge fan of the brand obviously you guys can tell they're not designed to be recrafted cost wise if we were to charge for these i mean the amount of work that went into them plus the material costs and everything that was done you're easily pushing about 300 dollars worth of work alone so i'm not going to give an exact price but that's above the 300 i would say uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of why it's not worth it. But at this point, actually, once you pay that initial cost, and that's what a lot of people do, uh, once you pay that initial cost, it ends up being a lot more cost effective to end up getting these resold and over and over with the new welt and everything done to them. Again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.